Sports Update. I'm Lisa Stewart. 104.5. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Hi, I'm Cleveland Gary. Welcome to Beyond Sports. Another day to talk about all kinds of issues. We, we, we have a, an amazing show tonight for you. Sort of like a, 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 a homecoming of, of sort. We have a, a, a guest on tonight that uh, has been in the BSC circle for quite some time. And uh, we're gonna talk about BSC and all the wonderful things that are happening to Black Shopping Channel. Uh, the bottom line here, we are so excited to create a platform that vendors like you, small business owners, can have your own home, you know, to sell your products, to disseminate your products, that content, all over mainstream, linear TV, uh, live stream, you name it. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, first up, I want to introduce my guest. I have Dr. Davina Smith with us. How are you doing, Dr. Davina Smith? Good evening. I'm doing great. Thank you. Wonderful. Nice to have you back. We have also with us, this is Julia Rogers who's a guru, entrepreneur, always great to have her back. She's the Motor City of CG Beyond Sports. She can talk for two days without stopping, but <laughs> nice to <laughs> Hey, I resemble that remark. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we also have Mr. Bill Houston out of Louisville, Kentucky. That's where the Kentucky Derby. And uh, he moved to Louisville in hopes of being the first African-American to win the Kentucky Derby. But he never did. But that's a joke. But hey, welcome back, Bill. Yes, thank you. I greatly appreciate that. And I just have to add one quick history lesson. Um, in the early days of the Derby in the late um, 1800s, uh, all the jockeys were black. Um, so, you know, blacks have actually won the Kentucky Derby. Uh, and, and then that kind of changed. But yes, in the beginning, uh, all the jockeys were black in the Kentucky Derby. I'm sorry. I got to pause there for a second. Are you serious? Absolutely. If you get the chance to come to the wonderful city of Louisville and go to the historic Churchill Downs, there is a museum and part of the museum actually highlights the black jockeys of the early days of the Kentucky Derby. And in the Bill, beginning and isn't it true, Bill, that that the um the the lawn jockeys that people used to put on their lawns, not just to tether their horses and then use them for decorations, was actually based on the um, the jockeys that actually rode the horses in, in derbies and stuff? Absolutely. Uh, you know, just like we dominate the NFL and the NBA, we at, at one point dominated the horse racing industry. Uh, you know, I, I feel so not stupid, but lost here. I'm totally shocked. I thought I was a history guru. And to know that all the jockeys were African-Americans back in the day, well, how, did, how the hell did we get moved out? What happened? Um, that's that's a long story. <laughs> that that that's a that's a long story. But as um uh, as money um you know began to kind of pour into the horse racing industry, um you know uh, other people kind of moved into the industry. Uh, but uh, again, it's a very interesting uh, history to read and to learn and to, and to understand. And, and, and I think that really understanding you know history and, and doing the research and knowing these things. Um, you know, is, is really important and would give us a different perspective, um, you know, on today uh, and what the Derby's like today. Well, yeah, besides that, Cleveland, when, 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 um, when the media, as newspapers were growing and the media started uh, embracing um, horse racing as something that was, you know, horse racing was treated like dog fighting is right now. And then all of a sudden it got popularized, but they weren't going to celebrate <laughs> A jockey. If they're going to celebrate a jockey in the in the media, it wasn't they weren't going to be black. And then you also have to remember that original people who broke horses, uh, cowboys, were 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 black men. They weren't, you know. So so it stands to reason that if cow the original cowboys were slaves and black men breaking horses, then a white man was going to risk his life breaking a horse. They and a Native American wouldn't do it. So they use black men slaves to break horses. So if this black man's going to break a horse, why wouldn't he be able to race a horse? That is unbelievable. I'm so astonished. I can't believe it. Uh, believe it or not, I, I had 
a pony and a horse in my middle teen age, whatever, and I broke the horse. You know, I rode that sucker until he stopped bucking. Uh, but you know, I never oh, had DNA. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? Before we, this is so interesting. Before we uh, uh, continue on here, I want to introduce another guest. Um, this is sort of like a, a homecoming of BSC. Um, Julie was surprised to see uh, 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 this this uh, amazing uh, entrepreneur. And Tawana Anderson, I just want to introduce her to the platform. She's been a part of BSC for, for quite some time, understands the model and uh, all the years of travels and, and shows we've put on. So Julie and Tawana knows each other very well, very well. And Tawana, I just want to welcome you on the show and uh, connect you with your long lost friend, Julia <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> I know, I was like, that's not the last name I remember, but okay, I know that's Julie. <laughs> Oh, regular you know, Erica Kane. It's all good, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Cleveland. I really appreciate the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, getting, you know, as we move forward here to talk, you know, uh, when, when you talk about Black Shop and Channel, there's a lot of history to the Black Shop and Channel. And we have, you know, guests on this show tonight that can definitely tell you about BSC. You know, it's start you know, the, the, the hurdles that it had to overcome, and also the amazing, amazing moments and times, you know, we've had at BSC, the smiles we've been able to put on a lot of small business owners' face, the hope, you know, the hope that we, we put on hundreds of thousands of people faces and traveling around the country and doing the trade shows back in the day before the internet wave took off. And uh, to be in a position that we're in today, you know, back in the day when we first consummated the deal with uh, Dish Network, 14 and a half million homes, everybody went crazy because we originally traveled around the country with a concept. We were taping small business owners, you know, with their products, putting them on the internet. And uh, we were just working with the carriages and the cable providers to get this thing launched. And it was years, a lot of but you know what, you have to love something. You know, we had to love it to, to get through all that, to get to this point because we weren't on TV back then. But kind of tell Julie, you or, or, or Tawana can go, that no, no sequential order here, uh, about the, the days of BSC. What are some of your memories about BSC? I'm gonna let Julie go first because <laughs> I have so much to say. <laughs> Oh, I mean, of course, uh, my first one was um, actually meeting you in Baltimore. I'm here in the in the Washington, D.C. And, um, you know, to to find out into the crowds that were around the people that showed up at the hotel in Baltimore to audition their products. And um, I brought my daughters. I had my why daughters as models. And, why, don't you tell and, them about, why don't you tell them about the crowds, how crazy Oh, I mean, it, we were there for hours. Like that, that particular one ran until like one, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I was using teenage girls as models. They were like, oh, Julie, I'm tired. You know, it was just, but I mean, it, you know, the, the excitement over having um, a shopping channel opportunity was just amazing for people. And um, and then then I then of course I came to, to Florida when you had your first um, shareholders meeting as I was one of the founding shareholders so we just go so far back you know it's about my son is eighteen uh, he just graduated high school he was about two or three I remember that yeah yeah so he my boy I know Tawana right yeah he's getting old we're not. My last, I know that boy getting old, girl. <laughs> so, but yeah, but he was a baby, and now th that baby has graduated high school and get ready to start college. So, uh -huh. yeah, so it's it's been it's been so I've been from there when when the the channel just had a folding table and a white backdrop to a state of the art studio. Uh, one of the things that I, I have to say about about Cleveland Gary, y'all, is he is he is the teacher of if you wait until you have something before you go get something you will never have anything 
because I watched Cleveland Gary take the minimum of what he had in a vision and pull people together, both voluntarily and paid, and say, I just believe in the idea. And uh, it has been an inspiration, like I said, to watch this man go from a six foot folding table with a white tablecloth and a white sheet up in a background and a couple of cameras and some lights to you know, a state of the art facility in Florida that people could be just proud to present their products to and now to step into this space of a multi-million dollar exposure. It's just, it's just, it's been an amazing journey. Oh, yeah, and I, I feel like the vision came so, like he was, his vision was way before it's time, Maybe right? It's time. But the great Maybe. thing is it's in timeless and we, and it's still a great niche. Like this is a great opportunity where there is nothing else like this. I know, you know, that I am always looking to buy black whether I am online looking for a black owned vodka distillery or a winery, like I'm always looking to buy black and this is gonna make it so much easier to just be able to go to bst.com, blackshoppingtown.com and find all of those wonderful black products and knowing that I'm supporting them, I can't wait. And yes, Julie, I feel like it was the vision that kept us all going. We had so much fun. Like it was only the belief in the, in the dream of this is a great concept. This is gonna be huge. And it just carried us. I, I was telling you. Well, you know, and you got to love how, how Cleveland does things classy too, you know? Yes. He does it classy because he, he would throw out of his own pocket, would throw beautiful dinners, elegant stuff and, and all of that. And, you know, what I'm very excited about, particularly as it relates to Color and Soul and my newest um, skincare line for anti-aging for women of color, Waka, um, is... I've always referred to myself as a best kept secret. And right. I'm like, I'm the best. I've, I've done blends and things. And when you see the need that, that particularly black women have for someone to understand them, when you make a color for a woman and she bursts into tears because somebody understands. It matches, and, and, and oh my God, it, it matches. <laughs> and just, and I mean, and, and it has that visceral reaction. And so I've always referred to myself as a best kept secret. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just the best kept secret. And, and the fact that, you know, time has, has its reward to know that I'm not going to be a secret anymore. I, I'm just really loving that idea. Love you know, that. Julie, way back in the day, you know, we, like I said, uh, Bill and uh, Davina, it was uh, a lot of, a lot of tra traveling all over the country. We would do trade shows. And what was so intriguing about it, we would, that weekend, we would pack over the weekend 30,000. Just the vision, the idea of how people have been deprived. We went to Jacksonville, Osborne, North Carolina, Baltimore, Detroit, you name it. And over the weekend, I mean, we would be up to two to three to four in the morning, Bill, with vendors coming in the hotel. We'd say, look, we got to shut it down. They say, oh, no, you can't shut it down. I came here with my product. And I'm going to get my product tape. I said, okay, let me get back over behind the set. You know, T, crank it up. <laughs> so We've been to some great cities and haven't seen any of them except the inside of, a, of, the, <laughs> of the hotel. Absolutely. We would be at the three in the morning, Davina, three in the morning taping products. So just to be able to be in a position that we're in now with Dish Network, Direct TV, Spectrum, Charter, ATTU verse, direct and dish, um, and also the digital media platforms. And uh, we're going to get into that later in the show. And uh, Tawana will talk about that. But Davina, it's, it's, if you, you know, in current times, I know you're excited about the Black Shop Shopping Channel. Kind of tell us about your enthusiasm and, 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 and what it brings to the American population, how it can be beneficial, and, 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 and uh, your, your take on it. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, it is it's a game changer. And I think it is very timely. Um, actually, I read an article that said, you know, COVID has spurred the growth of Black businesses. So I think even with that, this is even more important because, you know, one of the things that we're missing is that ability to, you know, be represented, the visibility, you know, and the Black Shopping Channel will provide that, you know, a larger audience, awareness, 
Um, it's a way to mobilize the community. It's a way to educate people on entrepreneurship. It's a way to, you know, get out there out front and be leaders, you know, show people what's possible. Um, again, you know, as minorities, we spend, you know, one trillion in the gross uh, income, but only, you know, two percent of that is reinvested back into the Black community. So I think this is an opportunity to, you know, make sure that people are reinvesting back into the community because that reinvestment doesn't just help black businesses, it helps black communities, it helps families, it helps the next generation. It's something that will continue to make an impact on everyone's life. Bill? Wow, it's hard to, it's hard to follow up behind that one, <laughs> Dr. Smith, that was really powerful. Uh, but you know, absolutely, when, when, when you think about this opportunity, um, you know, personally having worked in the space of trying to create social media platforms, um, you know, having worked with these black business directories, you know, the black shopping channel is like a black business directory on super steroids, right? Uh, this is an opportunity that is enormous. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to even wrap my brain around this opportunity. And to think that, you know, this is going to be something that allows these businesses to be in the homes of, you know, 110 million people. You think about the size of that market, uh, that, that is staggering. Um, and, you know, when, when I think about when I think about the story that I just heard about the development of the Black Shopping Channel, uh, you know, that is the story of entrepreneurship, right? So everybody's going to talk about the Black Shopping Channel today in 2022, but understanding that this started out as a dream and a vision that people had to work hard towards when there wasn't necessarily a payday in front of them, but they never gave up and, and they kept on, you know, really pushing and pushing. And, and that's, you know, that's what entrepreneurship is. And it was really exciting to me, uh, you know, when I started researching the Black Shopping Channel, I had no idea how far back it went. I had no idea the people who were involved in this. I remember, I remember watching a video and saying, and saying to Cleveland, wow, I didn't know you knew these people. It was just like, wow, this is an idea. And I think that right now it is an idea whose time has come because of you know, where we are with, you know, with cable TV, with connected TV. Um, this is just a powerful opportunity. And, uh, you know, and it's going to require the people up their marketing game because now they're going to have new markets to tap. Right. The key here, Bill, thank you, is to prove that this is a deserving, op this is deserving opportunity for us and it's, it's definitely needed. Um, no offense to anyone. You've got to have it. You know, it's needed. It's a need, you know, it's beyond a dream. This is a need for people to watch what moves, moves them, you know, it's in their soul. And to one of we, in, in one of our shows, we were talking about even having a, and you know, how I think out of the box, having a, you know, back in the day you had Soul Train, you know, and uh, that was an amazing show when Don Cornelius was brilliant man he was. I mean, everybody was glued to Soul Train because it was something that was out of dynasty. We were not accustomed to seeing that cultural kind of environment on, in, in a two on television. And uh, we thought about having like a black shopping channel dance where like a Soul Train dance, Soul Train, where, you know, you can spend 30 minutes or an hour where people are dancing in vendors clothing apparel and they're going through the line and turning around i don't know if i can do that i'm too old i may hurt my back but anyway uh turning around and you know presenting those clothes the makeup that they wear you know you got color and soul the lipstick that they're wearing we're it's so creative and innovative and having really smart people like uh julie davina and yourself to put these shows together is going to be very exciting you know for me because i know we have a lot of talented people and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you all to make that happen. So there's nothing out of reach. There's not, nothing impossible. And one thing I say all the time, there's nothing like having a great time making money. 
And when you use that word, people get so sensitive about it. Oh, you got to do this help. Well, we are giving back, you know. You, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to make money and have a good time, you know. That's all right. So we, we believe and feel that it's our time. Yeah, that I think that everything that everyone said, but I just have to go back to what Davina said, Cleveland, because as she was giving that the statistic about how our money just does not stay in our community, we knew that 15 years ago, right? We, we talked about that all the time. And I'm a little bit disappointed that those statistics have not changed. <laughs> like it's a little bit disappointing to me that we are still in that same space, um, but encouraged that it, we've got Black Shopping Channel to make that change. So that's awesome. And just really quick, uh, Bill, my dad was born in Louisville. So I've always had a little, a little piece of my heart belongs there in Louisville. So I just want to say, <laughs> just want to let you know that. Well, I just want you, Bill, since you gave me that historic news, I'm going to uh, qualify. I'm going to try for the Kentucky Derby next year as a jock. That's right. I think I can win it. You shouldn't have said it. Julie, you added the icing on the cake. And I think I can do it. So get ready. I'm just telling you. I'm going to sign up to be one of the jockeys in the Kentucky Derby. I think I can win it. You do You do know horse jockeys are usually under five foot six. Right? I already knew you were going to say <laughs> Yes. I already knew that. I'm going to lose We're breaking, maybe, but. Uh... <laughs> so at 6'2", I can't do You can prepare the horse right. for the jockey. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll just be the guy who <laughs> let, let my lead. So here, here's maybe a more interesting goal, right? Um, as, as the Black Shopping Channel becomes healthier and healthier financially, maybe we take a horse to the Kentucky Derby as owners. That part. There you go, Bill. There you go. Hey, guys. I like, how, the, I like how you think. <laughs> this is so good. We got to take a break. Keep those dials locked. You're watching CTV on Sports. We'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip-hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home. You want a car. But your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCred, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCred's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy foreclosure or collections for more information go to www.ecred.com create your own ecred credit report by adding your light bill water bill mobile phone auto insurance and even rental payments all validate your credit worthiness at ecred go to www.ecred.com and sign up today it's free get the keys to your new home or your new car 
The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street. Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. 104.5. Listen at home, work, and in your car. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. All right, welcome back to CG Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host. I have with me Bill Houston, Tawana Anderson, Julia Rogers, and Dr. Davina Smith. We are talking about the historic days, the old times of BSC, and uh, what it is today, and uh, how blessed we've been to be able to sustain uh, all these years, maintain, and uh, stay focused, never giving up on the dream, never walking away, never quitting in spite of all the obstacles we've heard it all, had to hurdle over. And I'm just excited about it. Um, when you look at a vision, you, can, you, you, see, you see what you see, you're passionate about it, but sometimes you don't have any idea how it will evolve. You have no idea. You just know you believe. You know you're excited about it, you're passionate about it, and it's not about the money. It's never about the money. It's always about the passion. But being that we live in a capitalistic society, a capitalistic world, uh, you, you, you can't take money for granted. And so it's almost like a, you know, a conflict because it's not about the money, but it is about the money. And, uh, and I know that's, that's a conflict, but bottom line, when you're dealing with you know, the American population, consumer-driven, you're making money, that's what keeps the doors open. You gotta pay your bills, you gotta pay your staff, you gotta pay people, your cost of services, your cost of products. So it becomes about money. But the driving force should be the passion behind the mission. Because I believe if, you have, if the passion is behind the mission, the money will always come. But if you think about the money, the money, the money, I mean, you'll never be able to bring that idea in full fruition. And so I'm so excited to have people on this platform tonight that cares about the mission. And, you know, and I talk to, you know, African-Americans and, uh, and, I, and I have to tell them aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, you always hear, well, you know, money, you know, it's this crabs in a bucket thing. And one person is trying to get to the top. You have crabs in the bucket trying to pull them down. And this is what I said to somebody recently. I said, you know, here we are driving in our cars. We're headed to this event and we're going to buy a ticket. Who's getting the money? Who owns a corporation? Go look them up. Here we are, you know, you're gonna to go to Walmart. You're gonna to go to McDonald's. You're gonna to go to this store, that store. You're gonna to go to this event. Who owns the business? So you are an employer or an employee and you're making money every day. That is disposable income. If you look at these statistics, the African-American dollar only stays in its community for four hours and it leaves. It's gone, it evaporates. If you think about it, you putting so much time between nine to five, hard work, making money, getting paid by the hour, all right, as an employee. As an employer, you're working to make sure that business is profitable, if there's no profits in it, you, you got to pay everybody, you don't get paid. So it, it's been such a struggle and we have to understand, we try to find ways to find out what's the solution to becoming economic sound? What's the solution of living the American dream? It's right in front of your face. And I think, sometimes I think maybe God, maybe God designed it that way. He's saying, if you develop a heart, you, if you have agape love and you love your neighbor like you love yourself, 
you're going to be happy for that person. You're going to work together. You're going to be unified as a team. And when two people are there, he's gathered. When you put on that game face as a team player, nothing can stop you. You'll never be able to build generational wealth for, you know, your, 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 your children and grandchildren if we don't understand the concept. When you look at these statistics on Asians and other races of people, their dollar stays within their community 10 days all the way up to a month. It is virtually impossible to build wealth if your dollar is ciphering out of that community like that. So be happy for one another. Say encouraging words to one another. When they're down, pick them up. It's all about impacting the lives of each other. And if we do this, we'll bring this economic system to a more equilibrium platform. And guys, I'm going to shut up. That's all I wanted to say. It's very important. I just had to get that out. I love that you brought that up though, Cleveland, because we did, I feel like we do sometimes have that crab in a barrel mentality, but it's just a, it's just a matter of shifting our focus because when I think immediately my brain goes to ants. Like when you see ants, they kind of crawl over each other too, but their purpose is for everyone to crawl over everyone. And then that last person comes up to, and then they're all up together. So I like to think of it more like, you know, less like crabs in a barrel, you know, more like ants, you know, getting it done because they get it done. So that in my mind, that's what I think of. And so I, I hope that we can get through BSC kind of the switch in our perspective. So we're not worried about being crabs in a barrel, but we're in, in excited about being ants in a farm. That's, in a farm. that's what I was, that's what I was thinking, Tawana, because in my experience, I'm 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 celebrating 40 years doing this, doing, doing what I've done. And in a 40 year period, I'm a licensed esthetician. And usually a person in my, my category of skincare, when you're a licensed esthetician working in salons and spas, you spend your career working on white women, you know, anti-aging among Caucasians is huge, but I have the exact opposite experience in that I would average uh, over the years, give or take a couple of places I've worked two white clients a year. It was a running joke when one, when the one would show up that year, I'd say, hey, how are you? <laughs> Welcome, you know, because I got so few, you know, as a native Washingtonian here in Chocolate City, you know, that those are the people that I have served. And here's what I have learned, particularly about women of color. They are the most brand loyal human beings you ever wanna meet. They are super green and everything, we want it natural. And once we find something that we really believe in, we don't leave. So I think that, you know, it is a situation where there is just lack of knowledge of where the quality businesses are. If I give you a quality product and a quality experience, I have earned my living. And so I don't ask anybody to do, don't treat me new. All I'm asking you to do is transfer your dollars to a company that cares about who you are, your unique needs and addresses them. If that's the case, you, you're gonna buy hair care anyway. You're gonna buy makeup anyway. You're gonna buy a house, you're gonna buy shoes, you're gonna buy clothing, you're gonna buy cookware. You're gonna buy those things anyway. All we're saying is transfer your brand loyalty to brands that are loyal to you. And I think that the, 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 the launch of the shopping channel puts on blast those businesses that have been doing the groundwork. You know, it wasn't until Kevin Harrington put the Ginsu knife guy on television that he became, but that man had been traveling around to cooking shows, presenting that knife for decades before Kevin Harrington got to him and actually put him on television. And awesome. you're about to take what Kevin Harrington did for one guy and do it for thousands. And it, it, it's, it's an amazing undertaking. Absolutely. Under that token, go to blackshoppingchannel.com and just sign up as a member. It's free. We're coming. We're going to disseminate information to you via email, phone, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, Julie and uh, uh, Tawana can attest to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I guarantee it. You will have a lot of fun and you will make money and that's healthy. 
Uh, I'm going to let Bill and or, uh, Dr. Smith go ahead and uh, elaborate on the uh, money recycling into our communities with the four hours, the 10 days, and everybody's trying to figure out how do we do this transfer of wealth? How do we make it a more equilibrium platform? Well, there you go. That's the answer. It's, it's where you spend your dollars, you know, Dr. Smith. Yeah, I mean, I think Julie said it exactly perfect. I mean, it's it's about, you know, just shifting who you're being loyal to being be loyal to the people that are going to be loyal to you, the people that understand you, you know, and the people that are, are really trying to provide you a service and that they actually, you know, people that look like you and understand exactly what you're looking for. Because there, there is a difference between, you know, buying something from someone who's just trying to exploit you versus buying something from someone who understands where you've been and where you're trying to go. So I think, you know, this is an excellent platform just to, you know, really cater to people's needs because we understand what those needs are. Mr. Houston. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and to kind of piggyback on that, the, the opportunity um, that the Black Shopping Channel provides these small businesses is enormous. Uh, but when we talk about, you know, the dollar staying in our community, uh, one of the observations that I've made over my life, and some of this is a personal observation, is when I was a kid coming up, I looked at a dollar as a consumer, right? I, the only reason I had dollars was to spend them. And, you know, understanding what business is, how business works, and that every dollar I spend is an investment in someone, someone's business, someone's product. And if I continue to invest outside of the community, maybe where I live, then that's going to make that community richer. And, uh, you know, eventually I'm not going to have anything. Um, and, and I think the BSC provides an opportunity uh, to take some of that $1.6 trillion in spending power and invest it in the community, keep it circulating in the community. And, you know, that is a huge opportunity. And I think when we push this out and, and understand it, that $1.6 trillion, you know, when you think about that on a global level, that makes us 11th or 12th in economic activity globally. Right? I mean, that is huge. That is tremendous. And, and sometimes we, we get, you know, like hyper focused on, you know, the physical community where I live today and, you know, and things look bad. And, but but that's not the, that's not the bigger reality. And I think that the other aspect of the Black Shopping Channel that is going to be huge is that as these small businesses that, that have kind of been hidden away as they get into these homes and other people from other communities start to see the exciting products that we're bringing to market, what, what you're going to see is that, you know, we're all Americans, right? And this adds to the American bottom line. This is economic activity in the United States. It may be starting and growing in our community, but it's economic activity across the U.S. spectrum. Um, and, you know, when you look at studies from McKinsey, you, you start to understand that as, as the community grows, as the community becomes more prosperous, America becomes more prosperous. And, and that's why I think that the Black Shopping Channel is going to be a powerful economic vehicle. And you know, when you look at history, all the great entrepreneurs that invented things, and uh, the guy with the Sears Sucker gun, you look at the guy who created the traffic light, uh, Madam C.J. Walker, you look at all these great entrepreneurs who, who achieved and excelled back during those times, you know, weren't too far out of slavery. I'm just keeping it real. And they were able to, man, they were so tenacious, just undeniable. You go, they're going to get that idea to market. And it's, it's sort of emotional, very sentimental. And when I look at Black Shop and Channel, we owe it to them, you know. You know, we owe it to them to keep that legacy alive. It's really not about us. It's about your ideas, you know, manifesting into a reality where your products can be sold, you know, in mainstream and you can make money from that and you can provide a great product that somebody can enjoy, can enjoy. And that's what I love about BSC and, and also with having brilliant minds like you all, you know, Bill, you and, 
and uh, Davina and uh, Julie and Twana. It's uh, what I'm excited about watching the 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 involvement, the the creativity, the innovation, implementation, ideas coming into reality. And no offense to no one, you know, I, I I'm so grateful. You know, I give them their props. You know, the other shopping channels. You know, QVC does four billion dollars a quarter. The other one does two and a half billion. But we spend 1.6 trillion. So we're going to be right in between. We're either going to be between you or on top of you. And we're going to always strive to be number one. And competition is a good thing. You know, as a professional athlete, professional athlete, you know, that's, that's, I mean, without competition, I wouldn't have been able to excel. You know, competition is healthy. It's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? If you believe in yourself, if you truly have passion and you're driven, you'll always succeed. I like competition. No big deal. But BSC needs to be in that position that we're in. We need to be in this position and having all those homes. And also too, I think Tawana can expand uh, in the area of digital media, you know, uh, uh, beyond television, the where TV has gone with the iOS devices, the smart TVs, the over the air markets, those the rabbit ears back in the day, the tangible physical antennas are now embedded via software encoded inside of TVs and uh, leaving no stones unturned. Uh, she's been a part of BSC for a long time. And so it's, it, you know, she can kind of tell you a little bit about reaching other markets, you know, from Gen Zers to millennials to Gen Y, Gen X, all the way to baby boomers. So she's going to expand on that as it relates to linear TV and uh, the digital media platforms. Yeah, you know, when we first got started and we, Julie, you know this, we would get so excited. Oh my God, we're going to be on Dish TV. We're going to get to 4 million households. And now the way that, um, and actually COVID sped things up a lot, the way we watch TV and how we consume our entertainment has just changed dramatically. So we don't just have those 14,000 homes, you know, cable TV watchers anymore. We have the whole world that we get to advertise to because you know, the side effect of all of this wonderful um, data that everyone's been collecting on us is that they know everything about you, Bill. They know about you, Davina, and they know about you, Julie. They know that Julie is a business owner. She has kids, she's married, she owns her home where she lives. And so now we can take through OTT, over the top TV and advertise strictly to you. So Julie, you will know all of your advertising dollars when you're advertising OTT, it's going to go to the people who want to see your advertising and they're interested in what you have to tell them. Right. Absolutely. And see, you can kind of explain a little bit more the fact that BSC is in that circle, you know, as it relates to generating revenue, you know, and uh, from linear TV all the way to digital media. All the way. And, and it's have, really still connected though. Linear, uh, digital, it's still connected in a lot of ways. Um, but the great thing is the way things have expanded and progressed now, you will actually, through attribution, get to see exactly how your dollars are spent, where they're best spent, like the advent of OTT um, television right now and how we are able to get directly to the, to the buyer that you want is just amazing. It's, it's, right. it's awesome. So there's and more. I'm sorry, go ahead. But no, you go ahead and finish. You go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I, you know, Black Shopping Channel is just so unique. Um, I just have to go back and say, yes, it's about money. But when Cleveland, when you created this company, it wasn't about you making money. It's a, it, it was you giving people an avenue for them to make money because you recognized how difficult it was. And I don't know if I should say this here live or not. If not, then you can just back me up. But I remember it was also your dream because one of the biggest um, hurdles that we found from people was getting their products produced. Right. And you had a plan. I don't know if it's still your vision to be able to have a facility here in America where people can get their products produced, because I feel like right, Julie, like how the biggest part was you finding someone that could package your your beauty products. Right. I, I, that, I, I, that, absolutely. Yeah. And that was the thing that that, you know, there was two things. One, about seven years ago, I uh, I, I auditioned for another shopping channel. And um, yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. that was the biggest thing. I ain't gonna say who it was, but 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 the point was in the meeting, uh, I was told by you know the, the billion dollar man himself as well as Kevin Harrington to my face, 
oh, you've got a, you've got a product that's going to move, but when you come up with $150,000, come back and talk to me. And there was, I mean, it was a good lesson because it taught me about scaling, that it's more than just having a quality product, but it's also about the ability to scale up because the only thing worse than having a million units of product and no demand is a bunch of demand and no product. And so the understanding of what is necessary to scale, to be prepared for the yes, the big yes on the big stage is, is, you know, is just that. So this BSC concept is, is unique in two ways. One, it gives us opportunity to be exposed in such a way that the upfront investment is not some crazy unattainable amount. And, and two, the, the time that you need to gain exposure, gain desire, and scale up to meet the demand. Um, those, you know, right. that whole learning experience is also something that's right. not present in other, in other shopping channel platforms. You got to come to that game already with 10,000 units in a warehouse somewhere. Who can afford that, if, you know, when you're starting out? You know, to add to that, Julie, what's interesting, um, the key here is manufacturing, you know, having the facility to mass produce those products, because when you have access to 110, if you take OTA markets, I'm talking about MSOs and satellites, if you take OTA markets and the way the content is distributed now with uh, digital media, you're talking about 250 million, then you go from households to viewers. So you're virtually talking about two, over 200 million you know, viewers. And so we gotta be ready. And the key is to take these small business owners, you're talking about impacting somebody else live, being able to mass produce those products because at BSC, we anticipate within a 20, 48 hour, if we, those products are in rotation, just say color and soul in rotation on BSC, we expect, you know, within 48 hours, at least a 2 million gross, because you got to understand, we're disseminating TV in inventory. We're extending that inventory to that vendor. So as their cost allocation to us, how much money is the network paying per second to have that vendor on air? And a lot of people don't understand that. It's a big cost when you're spending $30 million a year just on airtime. So we have to make sure the vendors are not only ready, but they have a, an efficient amount of inventory. Because if you're in a 200 million viewers' faces, you can sell that product is hot, and you just got that personality, and everything is just clicking. You know, you can you, you it's all a numbers game. 200 million, you can pop out a million units at 25 bucks. It happens. It can happen. So we have to have the inventory. And so as it relates to product origination, that's something I focus on every single day. And that's why having the wherewithal uh, to mass produce those products, sign agreements with those vendors, because it can be a perpetual ongoing process, especially being a low cost product, you know, ranging from anywhere from $5 to $50. So very, very key. And that's the brain, that's the, 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 the heart inside of a person. That part you gotta have you know, down to a science. And, and as T and, and as uh, Julie, you know, I, that's something we've worked on for years and years and years. And that's perpetual, it's not gonna stop because we wanna make sure you succeed, but we also wanna make sure our customers are happy. We can't not be running out of product because we know you guys are so talented, you're gonna sell and we just gotta have you know, efficient inventory. Very important discussion. I'm so glad we covered that. Um, Bill, when you look at uh, all the research you've done uh, from business, you know, via shopping channels, um, as far as creativity, creativity, what kind of shows would you like to see on Black Shopping Channel? Would you like to see just traditional, conventional, I'm selling cigars, buy one, call 1-800-2, here's the matches, smoke the cigar. <laughs> what kind of shows would you like to see on the channel? I'm on that show. Oh, sorry. Creativity. <laughs> I, uh, 
I, I'm actually a cigar smoker. Um, but no, uh, I, I think what would be really exciting and, and what is going to be really exciting is the fact that not only are we doing business, but we're doing business that's going to reflect the culture. Uh, right. So it, it's, it's going to be upbeat. It's going to be popping. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Did I really just say popping? Uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to be really exciting. And, uh, you know, it's going to be something that reflects the culture. Uh, you know, I, I was looking at a commercial and, and it made me laugh because the commercial 30 years ago would have like been it just it looks like an all black commercial. But today, you know, that hip hop music and the upbeat in our culture ha has kind of went global. And, uh, you know, and, and sometimes we don't we don't even realize it. And, and, and I think that a, as we continue to grow this and one of the things that, that I think that we haven't spoken about um, is the opportunity for new musicians to bring their music to market on the black shopping channel. Um, you know, that that's going to be another huge opportunity because we are such innovators in music. But when I think about all the work that I've done, all the research that I've done, um, you know, a, around keeping money in the economy, building an economy, what, what I really see as an opportunity with the Black Shopping Channel is as an economic driver that is going to be self-perpetuating. And what I mean by that is that as more business and more business is done on the Black Shopping Channel, it's going to create more ancillary businesses, which is going to create jobs. And as it creates jobs, it puts more money into the pockets of the consumers who are going to then shop on the black shopping channel and and that money it's going to increase and it's going to increase the economic activity and you know it's going to be at the center of that at the heart the driver is going to be the black shopping channel and these innovative small businesses and entrepreneurs and that's what's really exciting is the opportunity to be a part of that for me i want to ask uh dr davina smith a question but we have to go to a break keep those dials locked you're watching cd beyond sports we'll be right back this is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home, you want a car, but your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is ECRID, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through ECRID's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy, foreclosure, or collections. For more information, go to www.ecred.com. Create your own Ecred credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at Ecred. Go to www.ecred.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. 
The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on The Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. Hey, make sure you listen to the Rick Smiley Morning Show weekdays, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Plane. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM The Flame. All right, welcome back to CGB Young Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary. Final countdown. We have about five minutes before we have to depart, go home. But it's been a great show, and we'll just dialogue here a little bit before we go. Uh, Dr. Smith, before we uh, went away uh, momentarily for the break, I was going to ask you um, a question regarding uh, BSC. I kind of forgot. Isn't that something to forget on the radio? All you listeners, just it's okay, all right? I can forget. It's all right. All right. But anyway, um, it, it's always, always a pleasure to have, you know, guests like you, Bill and uh, uh, Julie and uh, Tawana. I'm glad you could come on and visit with us. We hope you come back. And uh, like I told uh, Davina and uh, Julie and Bill and I have talked about it. Uh, we'll let you uh, women. Did I say that right? I got to be careful what I say on that. Boy, if I say the wrong thing, boy, I get chopped up. I'm serious. Uh, you women <laughs> come on the show and host it and uh, on CG, CGB on sports. I, I would love that. I'm busy doing a lot of things. So would you all have any interest in coming in and hosting CGB on sports yourself at some time? As long as, as long as you don't make me talk about sports. <laughs> Dr. Smith. I, I'm in the beyond section. <laughs> beyond section, I got I mean, it. As long as I'm in the beyond section, I got you. I got your back. Got my back, all right. I got your back. I got your back. You got my back, Dr. Smith? Yep, I got your back. Got your back. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Anderson. Of course. And, and right. I don't mind talking about sports. All right, got hey, hey, I'm here. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm really excited, you know, and, and speaking uh, about sports, even though we're beyond sports, that, that, that does not mean we have to exclude sports because at time to time, you know, we'll have sports guests on. I've had my friend Jerome Bettis on. And, uh, and I, you know, I think about HBCU schools, historical black colleges with the creative financing that we're doing. Uh, it's exciting because as I work, you know, uh, on getting the channel ready to launch and work on various projects that I'm involved in, you know, one of the things I'm very intrigued uh, with historical black colleges, even though I went to an Ivy League school, uh, is, is uh, uh, supporting those, the sports program, like, you know, having an Ecrit Stadium, you know, BSC Stadium. We got to raise the bar here. You know, you have Hard Rock Stadium down in Miami where the Dolphins play. And uh, you have a lot of great athletes that play at these historical black colleges. And uh, uh, just having the financial support you know, to support them and build them better stadiums and, uh, you know, being able to support them a way they've never been supported. I'm excited looking, looking into that. And hopefully, you know, there's a possibility, you know, even though we're Black Shopping Channel, hey man, we like to have fun. I would love to host the uh, college Super Bowl, historical Black college Super Bowl on Black Shopping Channel. We're so creative and innovative, we can make something out of it. You know, back in the day, you know, where did bacon come from? You know, where did the uh, pork chops come from? You know, we're creative, we're innovative people. So why can't we have a college Super Bowl on Black Shopping Channel? Is that a problem? 
Absolutely not. I know somewhere you have a notebook with all these ideas in because you have like 15, 16 notebooks all the way all over the place. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell on me. Yeah, my notebook all over the place. Bill, they're looking in the notebooks and get the notebook, get the notebook. But anyway. <laughs> No, you know, I don't on have that, on that Cleveland. It, it's a little piece of advice because I'm sure that there are people who are watching this who are saying, Wow, I have a business, I have products, I have, and sometimes we can overthink a thing. And uh, you kind of caught me by the back of my dress and was like, Wait, 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 keep it simple. And I just want to remind folks that you know, Max Factor made his first million dollars on the sale of one shade of red lipstick and one pancake makeup. He made his first million dollars just with that one item. So the thing that I would just want to toss out there when I started, I started my first cosmetic line when I was 22 years old. I literally took one lipstick that had no label on it, sold it to a customer, went back and bought two and kept going until I had a whole line of, 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 of cosmetic products. Color and Soul is about the fourth line of cosmetics I've actually created. So I would just say, if you are an, a, a vendor, an entrepreneur who has had a vision of getting your products on the big stage, that is on television, it. keep it simple. Pick one great thing and, and let that one minute thing. beyond the show. And, and take you to the next level. And I'm <laughs> Julie's going to run BSC University. Julie, you are great. Yeah, I listen. Julie, you're great. Twana, thanks for coming. Dr. Davina, great as usual. I thank, appreciate the support. Me and my partner, I won't say partner in crime, partner in good things. Thank you, Bill, so much for coming on the show. All you listeners, thank you for listening. Thank you, Flame. We're going to depart, go home. It's time to say good night. Love you guys. See you next week. Take care. God bless. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Coming up after.